Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to use Blender which is a 3D animation application to create a 3D logo intro which you can use on your YouTube video. So if you've been watching my YouTube videos you'll see at the beginning I have this 3D animated logo where it says DCP web tutorials written underneath and I've, I've done this second version of this intro and I want to quickly show you that so I'm just going to leave the logo looping a couple of times so the first thing we want to do is go to Google and we will type in to Google Blender 3D and we'll click on this link here and we'll click on this download Blender 2.738 click on that there and we've got Windows a Mac and a Linux version and we've got 64-bit or 32-bit option if you're not sure which one to download if you're using Windows 8 you can click on the little start screen option here and go to search and type in system and it will tell you that you're using system type 64-bit or 32-bit here so you can download either 64-bit or 32-bit click on the relevant option download the software and install the application as you would install any other piece of software and then you can go to um, the start menu and I've pinned it to my tiles here blender you click on this little option down here this drop down arrow type in blender and then right click and pin it to your start I've already done that and then you can launch the application so as default this is uh, what blender will load up like and there's a couple of things that I normally do as default settings so I'm going to go to file and user preferences and in user preferences I want to make sure that I've got rotate around selection option selected and then go to input and then select with left mouse button as default blender selects objects with the right mouse and I find that a bit tricky to keep remembering to right click to select the object I prefer left click and then emulate numpad here this emulate numpad option and then we click save user settings save we can close this and we should always save our file so I'm going to go to file save as and let me here I've got 3d logo-01.blend so I'm calling it 01 because I'm going to create various versions here so just call it 3d logo 01 and it will cre we'll create a 3d logo 02 we'll save a separate file for each step that we go through in this process we want to keep uh, almost like a history of other versions so if we make a mistake or we're not too sure we don't like what we see we can always revert back to the previous option just give your file a sensible name and call it 01 at the end and save it so what do we see on the screen we see a camera we see a square cube and we see a light source and you know there's really there's two different types of uh, rendering engines they call it in blender there's the blender render and then there's the cycles render cycles render is a bit more complicated so we're going to stick with blender render for now and later i'll do a more a, you know a more complex tutorial that will show you cycles render as well and cycles render gives you more realistic uh rendering it takes longer to render but you, it looks more realistic so if you want to make something that looks really like a real object then you can use cycles render but for now we use blender render the default render engine and the first thing i want you to do is press the f12 key on your keyboard so if you look on your keyboard you want to just press this f12 key Let's just make this a bit smaller and when you press f12 you're going to render out what the camera can see you can see this cube with the light source over here so the light source is hitting the, the object from this side that's why it's dark on this side you can see the light source is here and if you press the escape key this one here it will take you back to the 3d view so press f12 to render 
and then escape key to remove or to go back to the 3D view. Okay, there's quite a lot of shortcut keys in Blender. There's loads of different shortcut keys and we're going to go through quite a few of them as we go through this tutorial and each step we're going to keep saving our document to make sure we keep a you know a well saved document so the next thing we want to look at is um, this square object in the middle and there's a few different shortcut keys that we can use to to manipulate this object this is quite a beginner's tutorial so I'm going to do some basic manipulation of this object. Um, I've got this notepad file where I've been making notes of all the different shortcut keys. So we've got R to rotate and S to scale. So let's look at rotating and scaling for now. So left click on the object and press R on your keyboard. And if you notice, if, if you move your mouse cursor away from the um, the object, you want to have it, you know, a little bit far away from the object when you press R on the keyboard. If you move it too close, then it's a bit more difficult to rotate. You want to have the, the rotation a bit further out the, when you press the R key, the, the mouse cursor, because then it's a bit easier to rotate. You can see it's easier to rotate here. So if you notice, when we press R on the keyboard, keyboard we can press the escape key to cancel the rotation so almost like escape will cancel that rotation and if we, if we look down here we've got the Z axis on the blue the green axis on the Y and the red axis on the red color uh, the X axis on the uh, on the red and we've got blue green and red here so we press R and then we press X we rotate on the X axis if we press R and Z, we'll rotate on the Z axis. And if we press R and Y, we rotate on the Y axis. And we press Escape to cancel the, the rotation. And it will move it back to its original state. If we press R and we press Z, we'll rotate on the Z axis. And if we left click, it will confirm that rotation and we can press Control Z like on any other application to undo what we just did so R is to rotate and we can isolate the rotation by pressing X Y or Z and depending on how we're looking at the object the X Y and Z options may change you can see X Y and Z here and if you're always looking at this bottom section here you'll know which key to press if you want to rotate it uh, on the different types of axis you'll see that here it'll be quite clear so let's look at scaling so we press S to scale and we can also press X Y and Z to isolate the scaling so we'll make sure the object is selected we can know we know it's selected because it's got these arrows these options here we'll press S to scale and we'll just scale it like this we can scale it and we can hold down the shift key to scale it on smaller increments and we can press the escape key to cancel the scale and we can press S and we can press Z to scale it on the height here and we can press S and Y to scale it on the width here on the Y axis and we can press S and X to scale it on this axis here as well and we've got this infinite scroll if you see the mass is going through the top of the screen and coming through the bottom that's like an infinite scroll so we can always keep scrolling without it having to uh, you know just makes life a lot easier we'll press the escape key we want our object back to it back at its default uh, view now if you see here we've got user perspective this is the this is what how we want to see the object and if we press um, our middle mouse button we can rotate hold down the middle mouse button on the mouse and we can 
rotate around the object and as we're rotating if you notice that th these options may change the X Y and Z depending on how you're looking at the object you'll see them rotate around just like that so have a little play around you can you can look at it from the bottom you can look at it from the top from the side the left the right and you can just rotate around the object like this and sometimes we want to look at the objects in a very specific view like from the front from the left from the right and if you go to view you can see camera top bottom front back right and left and we've got user perspective and orthographic view Orthographic view is very good for when you want to manipulate the objects in specific increments or you want to look at it on a flat surface. And perspective view is when you want to look at it, let's say from a from a user's perspective. This is how the how I or you would see the object. So if we press number one on our keyboard, it's going to take us to the front perspective. And if we press number two it will take us to the user perspective if we press number three it will take us to the right perspective number four is also user perspective number seven will be the top perspective the top view and normally i use number seven number one and number two sorry number three so one three and seven are typically the 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 views that i normally use quite frequently one three and seven and we can see here one is the front view number three is the right view and number seven is the top view these are the ones I typically use the most and if we we're now in right perspective if we middle mouse click we can rotate holding down the mouse we can rotate around the object again and If we press number seven, we're going to see top perspective, and we need we, you need to understand that you can switch between perspective and orthographic view using number five key on the keyboard. So if we press number five, we're going to switch to top orthographic view, and you can see everything's quite flat. All the objects are quite flat on the screen. If we press five again, then we're looking at the user user's perspective exactly from the top view. So number five is really good. We switch between perspective and orthographic. Orthographic is when you want to move the object in very specific increments. So I use orthographic quite a lot when I want to manipulate an object on its flat surface, looking at it from a flat view. And then number five, we press it again, and we're going to the perspective view. So sometimes you press number five, and then you try and rotate around the object, and it'll look a bit funny. It won't just won't look right. That's because you're in the orthographic view. But if you press number five again and go into perspective view, you'll see the objects much more clearly. So we can manipulate the camera in many different ways. I know it's quite tricky to understand all of this. This is this is a beginner's tutorial, so there's much more complex elements, but I just want you to understand that you can see your selected objects in different views. So number one will be the front view, number three will be the right side view. And number five, number seven will be the top view. And if you can't remember those shortcuts, you can always check them here. You can see them right here. And number five will be our perspective view and our orthographic view. Okay, at the moment, we need to press um, number seven on our keyboard and then make sure we press number five because we want to go into orthographic view. And we're going to click on this object and you can see it's selected because it's got a yellow highlight around it if we click on the light that will have a highlight around it and then this will no longer and we know the object selected because we've got the left and the right arrows the order the y and the x-axis arrows and we want to press delete key on our keyboard so we're just going to hit the delete key right here and that's going to delete this object it's going to ask us, are you sure you want to delete it? We're going to say, okay. And let's just check one thing here. Um, we can see um, 
if we, if we right click on the screen over here somewhere this is called the 3d cursor and when we add something to blender it will add it wherever the 3d cursor is located and we can move the 3d cursor around and that's where whatever we add our object that we add whether it's text or a circle or a square or whatever shape we want to add it will always add it to wherever we put this 3d cursor and we right click to move the 3d cursor and sometimes we want to put the 3d cursor bang in the middle of the screen and we can do that by pressing shift and c and that will move the 3d cursor right into the middle of the screen and we can use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out so you simply use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and sometimes we want to move let's say if we want to move this this x and y axis to the middle of the screen here we hold down the shift key and we middle mouse click with a, or mouse click the wheel so hold down the mouse wheel the middle mouse button and we can move or we, we call this panning so hold down the shift key and the um, middle mouse button the mouse will hold it down and we can pan around the screen we can move our objects or the, the screen into the middle of the screen we can move the X and Y into the middle of the screen so middle mouse button to rotate around selected objects and when we select an object we can use the middle mouse button to rotate around it shift and middle mouse button to pan around the object and shift and C will move the cursor it should be 3D cursor to the middle of the screen and we can right click to reposition the 3D cursor let's just save our file so just file save and we're going to press control and the letter A and this allows us to add objects to the system or to the canvas or the, the 3D environment let's say shift A and we can also add objects from here add but I like the shortcut shift A so shift A will add an object so we're going to press shift A and we want to add a text object text and we can see the text in here and what we want to do is we want to switch between object mode and edit mode so we can click on edit mode here and object mode here and edit mode will allow us to actually retype the text in or manipulate a specific object it happens to be text so we can retype the text in here and we can also do the same thing by pressing the tab key so if we click on the object and press tab that will switch between edit mode and object mode so shift a to add an object and we added a text object and tab key allows us to switch between object and edit mode so we'll click on this and we we'll press the tab key to make sure we're in edit mode and we're going to type in you can type in whatever you like I'm going to type in DCP web my company name and then I'm going to press the tab key one more time and this brings us back to object mode now the default font that blender uses is not very good and we want to pick a different font we want to make some so you know we have a nice font nice font to use and let's just save our work and we're going to use the mouse wheel and zoom in a little bit so use your mouse wheel to zoom in uh, mouse wheel upwards to zoom in and mouse wheel down to zoom out we zoom in a little bit and we hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button just to pan it across a little bit here so it's in the center this uh, X and Y and what we want to do is click on the object and hold down the left mouse button and we want to move the object so that it sits roughly
in the middle here in the middle of this x and y so you can see i've got three letters on this side three letters on this side and it's roughly sitting in the middle uh, on the height as well so we left click and drag it so that it sits roughly in the middle you may have to reposition yours if yours is slightly um larger text here because we want to get this registration point to the center here and we're going to go to object transform and we're going to say origin to 3d cursor here it is so this so our 3d cursor is now in the middle of our object or roughly in the middle we want it to be roughly in the middle next thing we want to do is change this font it's not very good so we're just going to save this and we'll go to Google and we'll type in free let's type in free commercial fonts and you know you could, there's loads of websites that are going to offer you free commercial fonts I'm going to happen to click on this one here someone's blog and they've listed loads of commercial fonts here and there was one font that I found in there that I quite liked we'll find it again uh, somewhere in here so it's this particular font it's called the uh, spin cycle so you can pick out whatever font that you like and I'm going to click on this spin cycle and I'm going to click on here to download it so let me just download this and click OK just minimize this and I've got this this folder on my desktop and this is where I'm saving all my work so I've got the 3d logo here and I've got these keys that I'm typing in here for your reference later I'll cut and paste this into um, the YouTube description so you've got access to these sh shortcut keys and in here I want to save the um, the font so I'm going to make a folder called font and just open that folder and I'm going to drag this font into here and I'm going to right click um, and extract the font here. There's a couple of different versions. You can view the license, and if we if we look at look at this license, it says here this font is free to use for any private or commercial manner. You can read through the T's and C's, but it's saying it's free to use, so let's use it. Let's just go back here. So find a font that you like. There's loads of websites here. You can find loads of different fonts. Make sure you read the T's and C's about the font to make sure it's free for commercial use. But you know, if it says it's free for commercial, then you can go ahead and use that. I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to go back to Blender, and I'm going to click on this text here, and I'm going to go to this font option here. In fact, first thing we do up in this section here, let's double click on this word where it says text and let's change that to DCP web. You can type in whatever you've written here. So you know what that what that particular font was because we're going to add more than one font or what more than one text, let's say. Let's save this. You can press control S to save or you can click file save here. And we're going to click on this font option here and we're going to go down to this regular option and we're going to click on this directory to browse and we'll click on my desktop I've got this folder here and we've made this fonts folder and inside of there we're going to click this uh, this font here there's a 3d version but I'm just going to click on this default version here and click open font and we can see our text has changed now we we'll probably need to move this this um, object and reset the center point because we can see it's a bit off so let's just move it to where we feel the center would be uh, we'll be roughly around here this will roughly be our center point if we um, use our mouse wheel to zoom in more get quite close 
we can see there's three boxes on this side and there's three boxes on this side here so we know this is roughly the middle but we can see there's a slightly larger gap here than there is on this side so we can shift it across a tiny bit just to make sure it's bang in the middle so it will be the middle of our object and we can see there's two boxes here and there's two boxes here there's one, two, three boxes here. Let's zoom in a bit more. One, two, three boxes. One, two, and there's three boxes here. So we can move this up a bit to about here. And we can see the gap here and the gap here on this third box is roughly the same. Now we know it's pretty much close to being in the middle of the object on the screen. And then we can go to Object, Transform origin to 3d cursor so that just means the 3d cursor is now in the middle of this particular object it's quite important for later so now we've got our default font in here with our text written on top we want to um, press number five on our keyboard number five and if we press five view it's going to switch from orthographic back to perspective view top orthographic press number five top perspective and then we're going to middle mouse click so hold down the middle mouse button and we're going to drag in fact we want to press uh let's press number one on the keyboard first that will take us to front view here's front view And what we want to do is um, middle mouse click and we just want to rotate around this object so it's at an angle, something like this. And we can hold down the shift key, middle mouse click and we can move it up a bit. And we can zoom in a bit closer using the mouse wheel. So use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and hold down the shift key to pan around. So we can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel and hold down the shift key to move the object or pan around the screen and what we want to do is press N on our keyboard to open up the transformer tools so we'll press N and we'll open up these transformer tools here and the rotation on the x-axis we want to set it to 90 degrees now we can see the object has been rotated 90 degrees and let's press um, N again on the keyboard to remove this transformer tool and we press number one on the keyboard this time number one and that's going to take us to the front perspective and we're going to press number five to go back into orthographic view and we zoom in a little bit and we can hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button to pan up and this red line is really we can think of it as the surface the middle the, the flat surface and we want to move our object up so we're gonna click on the blue arrow just here this blue arrow and we're going to drag up and we want it to be we let use the let go of the mass to confirm we want it to be roughly about one square from this red line which is the surface so let's press number five again and that will switch from orthographic to perspective and we're going to middle mass click again and we're going to rotate around we can see the object is floating a little bit now yeah that's what we wanted it's above the surface now with the object selected the text we want to go to extrude here and we're going to left click in extrude and we're going to drag to the right and we're going to set it to about 1 0 0.100 0 
and that will make it a thicker font. You can see now, if we middle mouse click, we can rotate around the text. Okay. Now, if we look at it roughly from the front, not exactly bang on the front. Well, actually, let's go into, let's press number one, and then let's press number five again. And we're going to front orthographic. So number one will be front view. And then number five will switch between perspective and orthographic. So we press one and then five to go to front orthographic. And depending on what font you've used, in this font, the gap is quite close. So I'm going to scroll down here on the side. And I'm going to set the letter spacing to about let's say 1.1 I just want a slightly more gap in between and then I'm going to press number 5 again which will switch us back to perspective and I'm going to middle mouse click and rotate holding down the mouse middle mouse button and rotate around the object so I can see it from a perspective and we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in a bit and then hold down the shift key and the middle mouse to pan around and we want to set the depth of the bevel so we can add a bevel to this to about one point there's a little arrow on the side here you can move that by incrementing like this so 0 0.015 and that just gives us this beveled edge here. Okay. So let's press number one on the keyboard again, and that will take us to front view. And we press number five to go into orthographic view. And we use the middle mouse to zoom out. So we're going to zoom out a bit. And we need to reset our, our middle uh, registration point. We can see clearly it's not really sitting in the center anymore. Because we manipulated the object, we changed the spacing, the, the, the gap in between. So it probably would have made more sense that we did all of this editing and then set the registration point at the, at the end, the middle registration point. But we live and we learn. So... We can see there's three boxes on this side, but there's only you know half a box on this side. So we're just going to drag the object across uh, to about here, and that will roughly be our center down this axis here. Uh, then we can go and do let's see object transform origins of 3d cursor in fact one minute when we after we've done that we want to drag it back down to here and we want to move the cursor from here to this middle point here so we go object transform origin to 3d cursor 3d cursor to origin so we've got our 3d cursor point bang in the middle of our object the origin right there so we can drag it back up again let's move this object a little bit higher up to about here and we want to press this duplicate button so if you press T on your keyboard it will remove this right side panel left side panel press T one more time and it will show the right side the left sorry the left side panel so N to transform tools on the right side of the screen and T for transform tools on the left side of the screen so N will open up the objects here 
tools and T will open up the objects here or the, or the tools here so we press N one more time to get rid of this side we don't need this at the moment and we're going to press this duplicate or shift D so when you hover over duplicate you can see it's written there shortcut shift D but we'll just press this duplicate and you can see the object as we move our mouse the object is um, being duplicated and we're going to press the um, when we duplicate we're just going to press the escape key and what that will do is put the object flat on top of the previous object and then we can use the blue arrow to drag it down so we make sure they're still aligned let's say one on top of the other now we want to click on this text below and we want to hit the tab key because that will allow us to go into edit mode or you can go down here and click edit mode but if you remember tab that will allow us to delete this text and we can type in you can type in whatever text you want I'm using tutorials and then we can press the tab key to come out of there So we want to try and get this text, let's just drag it across a little bit here. And I can either have this text a little bit wider than this top text or I can have it the same width but smaller font. There's a few different ways to do that. We can um, click on this text here. And we can manipulate its size. So we can shrink it down. To something like that. Here's the size option here for the font. So you can increase it or shrink it down. And I think um, we'll make it a bit smaller. We want to set the um, registration point for this object as well. So we can see there's two boxes on this side. There's just under two here. So let's drag it to the right a little bit. And if we use our mouse wheel, we can zoom in. And we can see two squares here and we can see two here but we can see there's an overlap into a third square here so we need to move this up slightly so we can see one two and a little bit here and one two boxes and a little bit here and then our 3d cursor will be in the middle of the object now so we can zoom out using the mouse wheel and we're going to go object transform origin to 3d cursor here okay we can now click on this little blue arrow and drag it back up and we can set it to roughly where we want it to be positioned so let's say about here so let's save this and we're going to press number five on our keyboard to go back into front perspective and we can use our mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit and we can middle mouse click to rotate around the object. Okay, cool. And let's press number seven, and that will go into top view. And we'll press number five to go into orthographic view. And we'll zoom out a bit. And we can see our light source here. And we're going to click on the light source. And we're going to middle, sorry, left, left click on the light source and drag it to the front here in front of the text right here somewhere and then we're going to click on the camera and we're going to press um, N the letter N on our keyboard and we're going to set all of these options to zero so we set X to zero Y to zero 
z to zero and the same with the rotation we'll set everything to zero for the minute then on the x rotation we're going to set it to 90 and then we're going to drag the camera backwards so we're going to click on the green arrow and drag it backwards to about somewhere like here for now so our camera is looking forward towards that at this object now we're going to press zero on our keyboard and zero will let us see what the camera sees and what we want to do here is we can see this is the, the z is going on the blue so this is our, our vertical axis so we're going to increase the z so I'm clicking in here in this transform tool I'm clicking left clicking in inside of the Z and dragging to the right with my mouse to move the camera up so I want to move it up and the um, let's see the X axis we want to decrease that and then we'll move the Z axis up more. We want to be looking down towards the object from a, well, not not right from the top, but at an angle looking downwards. So if we press, or if we go to view uh, right, which is number three, we can see our camera is looking down towards the object at an angle. We can use the blue to uh, manipulate that. Is looking down at the object, and if we press zero on the keyboard, we can see what our camera sees. So really, we want to, you know, we want to have it a bit higher up. So we'll just set the Z axis a little bit higher, something like this. So play around with these options, and you can get the camera looking at the object however you want it to look at the object. If we press F12 now on the keyboard, we can see our render. We can see the, the shadows being dropped onto the object itself. Let's just save this. I know it's not looking fantastic, but we're going to add some material to this text. And we'll add, add some shadows and we'll do some other manipulations of the object to make it look a lot better. So we'll press escape key. And one last thing we want to do is go to the world view here. So it's this little circle up this world view. And we want to set the background color to black. Let's set that to black. So when we press F12 again, we see a black background. And we press escape key to get back to our 3D view. So let's just save this. Next thing we want to do is press number 7 on our keyboard. That takes us to the top view again. And we want to press Shift A and we want to add a plane, mesh plane. So this is just a flat square object, it has no depth, it's just a flat plane. And then we want to press S to scale and we want to scale out this flat plane it can be quite large something like this and if we press F12 again to render we'll see now we can see our shadow being dropped here and again we're going to work on um, our light source to improve the, sh the shadow and we'll work on adding a material to this DCP web to improve the colors of this particular object so Let's just quickly recap on some of the shortcuts that we looked at in this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll go through and add, start adding some colours and uh, lighting sources and improve the, uh, the actual design of this, this logo in terms of its colours and so forth. We add some effects to it as well and later in the tutorial we'll start animating this logo and we're going to add some particle effects as well so we're going to add some sort of little explosion of particles. 
uh, as we're animating this object. So we want to right now we're in top orthographic and we want to press the number five key to go into perspective, and we can middle mouse click and hold down the mouse button to rotate around the object. So let's just go through the shortcuts that we looked at just to recap them. So we can hold down the shift key and middle mouse button, hold down both of them to pan around the object or the screen. We can hold down the middle mouse button on its own and we can drag up and down or left and right to move around the selected object. It's the selected object on the screen is what we're moving around. So if we click on this DCP web, we can move around that particular object. And you may have many objects in your scene and you can move around each one individually. Then if we want to scale our DCP web, we can press S on the keyboard and we can scale the object. And we press escape to cancel that. And we can press S and any of the X Y or Z um, to scale it in its different um, dimensions. So we can press S to scale and we can press X to scale it on its width like that. Or we can press S and then Y to scale it on its thickness of the object or we can press S and Z to scale it on its height. So those were the scaling objects. S equals scale, and then press X, Y, Z to isolate the scale. And we can press R to rotate, and then X, Y, and Z to isolate the rotate. So we click on the object, R to rotate, and we'll rotate it on the Z axis we can rotate it around and if we move this camera slightly to the side we can see Z Y and X here so when we click on the object if we press um, R to rotate and then we want to rotate it on the X axis we press X and we can rotate it this way around and you can see here which which option X Y Z you select to rotate on the different angles if you press R to rotate and you don't select any um, axis then it's just going to rotate you know a bit funny to be honest it depends on where you select the object from so that's how to rotate that's how to scale an object middle mouse button on its own just holding it down will rotate around the selected object that you've selected. Holding down the shift key middle mouse will allow you to pan around the um, object or the screen. And then most importantly is number one to view the front and press number five to view it in orthographic view and number five to view it in perspective view. Orthographic and perspective are very important. Perspective is what you want to see, and number one, and then number five, so it says perspective, and then number five is orthographic view to manipulate the object and position it or to change its dimensions on a very rigid scale. It's very, very important to understand those two. And then we've got number three to see it from the right side, and we've got number seven to see it from the top. One, three, and seven. And you, if you don't remember those, you can check them here as well. So that's the end of this first part of this tutorial. In the next part, we're going to add some materials to this logo. And we will also start looking at adding some effects. And we can do some, you know, some glossy drop shadows. And we can just make the objects. And we can add some other light sources to make the objects look much more uh, appealing, let's say. So we can press F12 to render finally, just to see what we've done so far. We're going to add some nice colours and we can add some sort of glossy material on the floor so this um, object will reflect. We can see it almost like a, like a reflection of this object. And uh, we'll add some more light sources to, to improve the, the shadows and also the, the colouring on the object itself. Okay, 
I know that was quite a tricky tutorial to, to, to follow but so far we've got you know a half decent looking logo and we'll improve that in the next tutorial let's go to file save and I look forward to seeing you in part two of this tutorial